I guess to start off, uh, a lot of water bodies, take Tampa Bay, for example, uh, has come a long ways. And that's because work started on certain water bodies in the state back in the 80s. There was a swim program. Tampa Bay was identified, for example, as one of the areas to be targeted. Uh, the NEP came in also, and you have seen some profound changes. That's 30 years worth of work. Interestingly enough, on springs, there wasn't much done on springs. And I have to tell you, I think a lot of it's just because it's so challenging. I mean, when you think about it, a spring shed is can be hundreds of miles. You're getting inputs of all sorts. You do have preferential flow paths. You've got different transmissivity. You've got different activities from septic tanks to agriculture. I'll tell you, from our perspective at St. John's, uh, myself and uh, Dr. Ed Lowe, who was our chief scientist until recently, uh, we put off springs, right? We had direction to go work on various ones by the legislature, and springs were never in the forefront. So. I will admit that we're a little behind, if you will, in general on springs. Um, but again, one of the reasons we're doing the UF research is to really kind of jumpstart all that. And we have been doing a lot of work on springs as well to try to kickstart restoration. And I'll just casually mention that at the end. I don't really have any slides. But the slides today are just some data slides. So they're not really all that exciting, unless you're you know, a hardcore scientist slash engineer. Uh, you want to just advance one? There we go. Um, so our slide, or our springs, uh, that we'll be talking about, these are the seven, or the, yeah, the seven outstanding Florida springs in our district as identified by the legislature in this past session. Again, all the uh, first magnitudes in blue, uh, Wakaiwa, which is very popular, De Leon, and Gemini. I think that's in uh, a certain senator's backyard, so that's, that's always helpful. It's a, it's a very important spring. Um, so to the data, I'm going to just do these five springs to give you some indication of what's going on. As Bob showed earlier, Silver Springs has shown a significant increase in nitrate. We have two background springs, Silver Glen and Alexander in the forest. Obviously very little anthropocentric uh, impact here. So these are kind of like our baseline springs. Blue Spring has had an added increase over time. And interestingly, you see all this variation. This is a function of new water and old water during uh, area times of uh, drought, you have less uh, new water, you have old water, and that usually has lower nitrate, for example, and in times of high rainfall, bringing in the new water that has the new fertilizers and septic tank effluent, you get higher peaks. But in general, the trend is still up at Blue Spring. Well, Kiowa is a little different. We've had a good trend downward, and part of that is a, uh, as far as we can tell, a changeover from a lot of the citrus industry in that spring shed, as well as St. John's bought the uh, north shore of uh, Lake Apopka, the muck farms there. There was a tremendous amount of uh, nitrogen uh, and other uh, phosphorus fertilizer placed onto those crops. They're very close to the spring, and the fact that we acquired those uh, starting in the late 80s, uh, that may contribute significantly to this reduction. Now there's more to do, that TNBL line is down here. So there are other players like septic tanks and others that need to be dealt with and fertilizer. But uh, we have made some headway at least uh, on uh, Wakanda. Uh, specific conductance isn't really, uh, really all that, whoops, all that exciting, but uh, just, so, just to give you another flavor as to why this stuff is so complicated, uh, you've got some very low level uh, of uh, salt in some of these. Some of these are much higher uh, levels of salt. You're at 1,000 here, 2,000 here. And believe it or not, this is because they happen to have more, they're closer to the old bed of what used to be the St. John's River Lagoon back in the day. And there's more salt water underneath that freshwater wedge. So again, when you have less rainfall, you end up getting more salt coming out because you're getting cold water coming out. And then DO really doesn't change that much at the spring vents. Uh, some of these, are, probably these are actually outliers. Um, not really too much we've done on DO, uh, but again, it tends to fluctuate, fluctuate a little bit also, more with rainfall than anything else. So that's all I really had to say uh, relative to the data. I'm down to one minute. So the only thing I'd also mention, as most of my colleagues have, is 
At our district, since about 2013, we have invested in about 72 different projects, be they with local governments or utilities or agriculture, to uh, deal with primarily water quality issues. I showed you earlier today about Blue Spring was a water quantity issue, so some of that investment went there. We've done a lot, however, to help upgrade wastewater plants, expand capacity of wastewater uh, plants. Uh, right here in Ocala, there's a pretty significant effort to get 850 septic tanks offline or hooked up to sewer, uh, phased out about five package plants, um, which are very close to Silver Spring. So those, those are the kind of projects. That's a $10 million project between ourselves, DEP, and the city of Ocala. So we haven't been sitting around waiting for, say, the science at our district. We've been investing, and we're trying to, you know, help move this ball forward again. It's not going to happen overnight, but uh, we at least think we're making some progress.